I have a number of strange habits, perhaps bordering on mental disorder. Here are five of them. Prepare yourself for the insanity. Number 1. Cutlery Here's my dish rack. It's a fairly ordinary looking dish rack, with nothing much out of the ordinary. However, there's something here that is the focus of my first strange habit. The cutlery compartment. You see, this is the normal way I sort cutlery. I put the plastic and wooden implements at the front, and the metal ones at the back. This is wrong. Actually, this is dangerous. My wife used to do this, and I almost skewered myself on a knife. But for the sake of safety, she now always places knives facing downwards. Forks are less of a concern, but they still can hurt. So it's best to place them pointing downwards as well. Now that's not really my strange habit. That's more of a safety issue than anything else. Now this is where things become a bit weird. This is also wrong. The metal implements are at the front. I simply cannot tolerate this. Why? Well, a few weeks ago, my friend was over, and while I was doing the washing up, he noticed that I always placed the knives at the back. He asked me whether it was because I have children. That is, I don't want the children being able to reach up and grab a knife. I just agreed with him, and he was pleased that he was able to read me so easily. But that's not the answer at all. You see, the real reason that I don't have knives facing outwards like this is because I've got it in my head that if a bad person were to break into my house and then walk past my dish rack, they'd easily be able to access a knife and then use it against me. I know, it's ridiculous. First of all, the chances of somebody sneaking into my house are slim to nil. Secondly, if they did manage to get in and intended on using a knife, would they not have just brought a knife with them? And even if they didn't bring a knife, How's this little setup going to fool them? How's me placing the knives in the back compartment going to somehow trick them into grabbing a chopstick instead? Obviously, it doesn't make any sense. I've always wondered if this is some kind of obsessive compulsive disorder, but by definition, it is not. To be classified as OCD, these thoughts and behaviours must cause tremendous distress, take up at least an hour of my time per day, and interfere with my daily life and relationship. But this little cutlery habit simply does not. When my wife washes up, she usually places the cutlery like this. You know, like a normal person. Metal, wood and plastic, all mixed together. And that's fine. I've got no issue with her doing this. But before I go to bed, I just make sure to rearrange the cutlery so it looks like this. It literally only takes me about five seconds. It's perhaps a bit strange, perhaps a little bit obsessive, but it doesn't hurt me or my family in any meaningful way. And on the plus side, there is a small chance that it'll somehow confuse the next robber who breaks into my house looking for a knife. But I doubt it. Number 2. Clothes pegs Here's my basket of clothes pegs. I have hundreds of them, many times more than I need. Why do I have so many? Because up until the end of last year, this was the way I had to hang my clothes. For a blue shirt, I had to use blue pegs. For a green shirt, I had to use green pegs. The colour of the pegs didn't have to match the clothes exactly, as long as it was similar. This is clearly wrong. You can't have beige pegs on a blue shirt, nor can you have purple pegs on a green shirt. This was also wrong. See how the blue pegs don't quite match, and the green pegs are a slightly different shade? I just couldn't bear that. So up until the end of last year, this is just how I hung my washing. Even now, I get a strange sense of satisfaction by just looking at this picture. But I ended up stopping doing this. Why? because it was chewing up a lot of my time. It was taking me about twice as long to hang out the washing, and I realised I was starting to go mad. Searching for the right colour combination of pegs and clothes was becoming an obsession, and I had to stop. So I ended up changing the rule so that this was okay. As long as the pegs matched each other, it didn't matter what colour the clothes were. But even this started to become a problem, so I did away with that too. Now this is the current situation. I've classified some pegs as light pegs, in that they're not very strong, so they can only be used to hold up light clothing like socks or children's clothing. There's a somewhat practical reason for this, because if I use these so-called light pegs on heavy clothing, the clothing often falls off in the wind. It doesn't matter if I mix and match the pegs, as long as light pegs are used on light clothing. Now I can use heavy pegs on light clothing if and only if I have run out of light pegs. So this can be correct or not correct, depending on which pegs remain in the basket. 
Heavy pegs must be used on heavy clothing. There's no excuse for not using heavy pegs. So this is what my clothesline looks like in 2020. Light pegs on light clothing, heavy pegs on heavy clothing. I know it still sounds obsessive, but this is the best that I can do. There's just something in my life that needs me to have some sort of sense of order when it comes to clothes pegs and laundry. Actually, this new set of rules is really easy and quick for me to follow and honestly doesn't interrupt my life in any meaningful way. Actually, apart from these couple of habits, I'm really not that obsessive. My children will often leave their room in a right state, toys all over the floor, etc. Although this does annoy me, the only rule I enforce when it comes to tidiness is that things shouldn't be left on the floor. A couple of times I've tripped up on toys at night, so it's often a safety issue more than it is a mental health issue. So my kids now know that Daddy expects things to be put away after play, and I think that's fairly reasonable. My wife also knows not to leave her clothes lying on the floor, so she dumps them all on this chair. That's fine. I wouldn't personally do it, but as long as they're not on the floor, I'm happy. Number 3. Electromagnetic Radiation Although I'm certainly not a 5G conspiracy theorist, I do remain wary of all this radiation being bounced around from mobile phone towers and Wi-Fi networks. Our PANZA, the Australian Government's Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency, says that there is no established scientific evidence of adverse health effects from Wi-Fi exposure. However, they do recommend some ways to limit exposure. To me, that doesn't scream confidence. If they were 100% sure that all this radiation wasn't hurting us, then surely they would just say so and not give any advice about how to avoid it. It's the same thing with mobile phones. Although the currently available scientific research does not indicate that using a mobile phone is associated with harmful health effects, there are things one can do to substantially reduce exposure if you are concerned. Again, why would they bother listing anything if they were 100% certain that mobile phone radiation doesn't hurt our bodies? Regardless, I always keep my phone in another room when I'm at home, or even at work. I don't need it on my person all the time. We have a rule at home that mobile phones stay out of the bedroom when we're sleeping. I don't think that's very crazy, and it certainly doesn't hurt us. The same goes for Wi-Fi. Here's our NBN connection box, which is connected to a Wi-Fi router. We always turn it off at night, even though it has a warning on it. Warning: Disconnecting this power supply may disable your national broadband network connection, including your phone and data services operating over the NBN. During a power failure, the backup battery will allow your phone and data services to operate for a limited time, provided the battery is installed and operating correctly. So of course, what did I do the first chance I got? I removed the battery and have never had it in since. I actually asked the NBN installer guy to not put a battery in it back in 2015, but as soon as I said that, he went on with some rant about human rights and how everyone deserves a stable Wi-Fi connection, blah blah blah, so I just let him install the damn thing. As soon as he left, I took out the battery and put it up in my top cupboard. I decide when the internet is on in my house, not some damn NBN Corporation representative. Number 4. Public Toilets Ok, I admit this one's a little bit weird. When I was living in Japan, I used to find myself having to use public toilets a lot. Where I live now in Australia, I'm rarely ever 10 minutes or so away from my home. But in Japan, I was often an hour or more away, so when I had to go, I had to go. Unsurprisingly, most Japanese toilets were very modern and clean. However, most of them were also crowded. I would sometimes find myself lining up to use them, but that wasn't the issue. Because they were so busy, when I went into a stall, all the other stalls were full. Although Japanese are known for their etiquette, when it comes to bathroom behaviour, it was no holds barred. Strange and disgusting sounds often emanated from neighbouring stalls. I won't go into the details, but it was disgusting and very off-putting. In the end, the only thing I could do was block my ears when I used the toilet, and I did that every time I had to visit a public toilet. The thing is, now that I'm back in Australia, I still do this if I have to visit a public toilet. I just can't bear the sound of other people doing whatever they do inside the other cubicles. And the last one, number 5. Always standing. I stand a lot. 
I stand up most of the day. I'm standing right now. A few years ago, I injured my back. I didn't do anything in particular. I just sat down a lot as part of my job. Apparently, sitting is just not very good for you, and from years of sitting down, my back just eventually gave out. Whenever I sat down, I would feel immense pain. I went to see doctors. I went to see specialists. Ultimately, the surgeon just said that I was too young for surgery, not that I wanted surgery, and he recommended that I deal with my back problem by avoiding sitting as much as possible and by walking more often. It worked. After a few months of not sitting down and walking everywhere, my back felt a lot better. I even stacked boxes on top of one another and made myself my own standing desk at home. This picture wasn't taken five years ago. It was taken yesterday. Yes, I still have a pile of boxes on top of my desk with my computer on top. To this day, I almost never use my computer sitting down. Anyway, they're my five strange habits. The only rule I have to keep my mental health in check is that if something is causing me concern or interrupting my life, I do something about it. And I think that's good advice for everyone.